Hi guys. Um, right, this morning, or in this video, I'm going to change over batteries. Now, this battery I bought less than a year ago and it is faltering. If I try to turn the car over now, you will hear that it's literally just barely turning it over. It's only the fact that the car starts pretty well, even on a cold morning, it starts. Now, I changed it, I bought this brand new battery and I originally thought it was a battery the original battery on the car that was at fault uh, but it turns out it actually was the alternator that was at fault um, I've got a brand new alternator on there now uh, as you saw from the other video which I installed that's charging fine so I put this new battery on and uh, it's, it's basically not holding a charge at all now when I first put this new battery on it was fine absolutely fine it was working fine it was starting on the button then when I started having starting problems one morning I was winding it over and yeah no what it was the fuel line had actually broken at the back of the car and I didn't realize and I was winding it over, winding it over and it got down to the point where it could barely turn the engine over okay my fault, probably shouldn't have let it get that low but this battery has not recovered since now I've got a brand new alternator on there it's given out well over 14 volts and it charges up charges up quick enough once you've started the engine once it's fine all day you leave it overnight and the battery is just not recovering so I've now got my old battery which I hadn't thrown away which is here now I've watched a couple of videos on YouTube on how to rejuvenate your battery now I was a little bit skeptical about the method they were using because I had always understood that if you overcharge a battery then you can warp the plates and damage the battery permanently uh, but apparently that's not the case so I've refurbished this battery according to the instructions on YouTube and it does seem to have worked now this is well down to 5 volts it's been sitting there over a year just, sorry no just under a year not charged up and it was about 5 volts it is at now 12.4 volts last night after I finished the treatment it was at 12.7 volts but the temperature has dropped and we're down to minus one so um, yeah so it, it's dropped down a little bit but that, that I would expect so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap these batteries over I'm going to put the original one back on and we'll see if it actually works if it does, then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same to this battery because my, my wife turned out that maybe this is old stock and that's why it's not recovering because I've actually had an 8 amp charger on this and it still, it still didn't do it so I'm going to try the method on this one that I used on the other one and I'm going to show you me actually doing it all right so you can do it for yourself so let's get this battery off this battery off okay got a couple of 13 mils right always take the negative off first i think i did tell you on one of my other videos but just to make sure always take neutral off first
and then positive. Because that way if you touch the chassis while well, you're taking the positive off or live, you've got no chance of sorting the battery out. Especially with modern cars, I mean on this one it's not quite so bad. If you sort the battery out, you just sort the battery out. But on modern cars with these on board CPUs, you could damage the CPU. So it's really not worth the risk. It pays to grease the terminals on your battery, it stops them turning white and then if you have to remove the terminals it's very easy. So it pays to grease the battery clamp. In theory, this we should come straight out. A new one, just under a year old. And that one is the one that came in the car originally. Now I've cleaned the terminals up already. As you see, I've got caps on there. Now you have to recap it yourself because these are sealed batteries. And I will show you. I went a bit wonky on one of them, to be honest. So didn't quite drill it accurately that's why it's looking a bit wonky to be honest but I'll get it better on the next one um, yeah I'm going to show you how to recondition one but let's get this one on first of all and see what the cranking amps are like Make sure you've got washers on them because you want to be spread it, spreading the load. Because lead likes squishing out. I'll well do the other one while I'm here, save myself all the hassle.
that's it. Okay. New live on first. Tight. Go mad, but they do need to be tight. Don't forget to put the rubber boot on. power supply for my um, onboard camera, my dash cam. That way, if you put also if you put the plastic boot on, then you make sure that you don't actually dab it with the other spanner. It's easy done. Twenty seven. Okay. You have your battery. 
it's got six cells each consisting producing 12 volt uh, each each producing two volts <coughs> that makes up your 12 volts for your battery now there is on normal batteries non sealed type you have the caps where you can top up the fluid you can see a very faint looks like a stopper there that's your first cell second cell third fourth fifth and sixth now we need to drill into these cells there's like a dual skin there's like this top skin the outer skin and then there's an inner skin and we need to drill through that inner skin but you've got to be very careful can't go too deep because you'll damage the cell below now I've found the right drill which is absolutely perfect for this and uh, I shall sort that out for you now and then I'll show you what to do next ok right this is a number 16 wood bit ok the depth is just where it starts to go and where it starts to slope and let me just measure that one moment ok it works out at an inch and a half depth just before that so that's how deep you must go no deeper than that once you'll damage the cell now fortunately the front bit here narrows down so it goes in between the cells <coughs> natural plates fortunately so which is ideal which is what we want okay now you want to try and drill them as accurately as you possibly can okay Right, and I shall show you what to do next. Right, now you want to be using a cordless drill. It's got more control. I don't know what's going on. Alright. As I say, you need to get the centre mark. Now they do have a, a very faint ring where the actual cells are. So, not one there, then put it as best you can. One appears to have been done differently. Of course, you. Oh, right, they've reskinned them. Done, they've done it differently on this one. <laughs> See, it just goes to show you, doesn't it? The cell is quite a way below it. So, in fact, that's better. So, You just want to clear the way. Alright. That's enough. That's deep enough. Okay, which is half of what I told you. Now, all the batteries might be different. But that is showing a nice round circle. Look, let me show you. Let me get you closer to it and then you'll be able to see. Just one moment. Okay, now if I move the battery about, you can see the water. Right now, I know, I know some of the bits have gone into the battery but they will push themselves out when we do the next stage 
so you can get the majority of those bits out they won't affect the run of the battery okay and there's just a little bit of a ledge left if you can see it there that's as deep as you want to go and so the trouble is all batteries are different I mean this one's different from the other one even though they look identical so and you want to do that to each cell okay so we'll carry on okay so that's one so try and keep them in line if you can that's lovely that kept right that plate is almost dry in fact none of them are brilliant right okay that one's good that one's got plenty of fluid in it You want to be making sure that you're wearing some sort of eye protection. I'm wearing glasses. But yeah, if you don't wear glasses, wear some goggles, yeah? You literally just want to get it out, alright? And the next one. pretty dry which would explain why it's not holding the charge now you can get in there with a pair of long nose pliers and pull some bits out remember you're dealing with acid so just use common sense all right Yeah. Yeah, quite a few fuse. These two cells are down. This one's dry almost, or below the plates. This one's not that brilliant. Yeah, so they're all a bit, all a bit dodgy. So we're going to have to top up with some distilled water. I mean, by all means, yeah, put a pair of gloves on because uh, obviously acid can burn. I should have told you that beforehand, really, but. Yeah, wear, wear, wear a pair of gloves and uh, rubber gloves and um, some eye protection so that if the acid spits up, uh, it's not going to go in your eyes, alright? But yeah, this cell is up, this cell is up. That one's just just on the plates. That one's below the plate. That one's below the plate. That one. That one. Well, I can't even see anything from that one. So not good. That would explain a lot. Yeah, not going to get in there much with that. But as I say, it will. It will spew it out when you start to do the process of charging it where you've got to charge it okay 
okay. Right, okay, so we need to top the cells up, all right. With some deionized water, okay. It's not too expensive to buy. That's what you want. Not ordinary tap water, okay? Because you'll ruin the battery. That'll absolutely ruin it. Be no good to the man or beast. Okay. And you need a funnel, which I have here. And you need to top the cells up. You may want them too high, ideally just above the plates, but. I suggest I'm just keep an eye. You don't want it pouring out the top, alright? You want to make sure it's above the plates, but you don't want it literally pouring out the top. Basically what happens, from what I can understand, is continuous, if you allow the battery to drop down below its minimum voltage, you get like a growth on the plates, like a crust on the plates, and the plates can no longer charge up properly, so you need to remove that crust in this. to do. So first of all what we're going to do is we're going to, because we've put fresh water in there, we just want to give it a little bit of a charge up just to initiate turning the acid, turning the water and, and, and bringing it in towards the acid. Okay, so what we'll do, first of all, we will find my electrical meter and get a reading <coughs> of what we've got at the moment. Okay. I don't know if you can see that clearly. Let's have a look. Okay, all right, let's have a look what we've got here. So put live in there. Yeah, that's not going to stay, I know it wouldn't. Right, let's do that one over there. Okay, right. right. uh, according to that, it's showing. 12.59 for the moment but I can assure you I mean that's probably improved since I've added water maybe I should have taken a reading before I put water in 
Um, but even though it's showing those kind of volts, the cranking amps aren't there and she barely turns over. So I'm going to show you how to get those cranking amps back. Okay. So turn it off. Just connect that from there. And now we're going to put it on a, a short charge. Now, I suggest you make sure that you're on a ventilated area. Okay, now I'm doing this in my workshop. But obviously don't do this indoors. Do it out in a garage or somewhere. Okay, or even outside if you can. Because you need plenty of ventilation. Because when this starts to charge, it will vent hydrogen gas. So, don't smoke near it while you're doing it don't have anything that can cause an electrical spark or anything like that okay and make sure your connections are good onto the battery you don't want to be that, that you don't want that to be sparking either okay right okay so what we'll do is we'll give it just like a preliminary charge just to get that water that new lot of water in the joist. Right, just turn the charger on. This has got eight amps going into it. So hopefully they should start to bubble shortly. There we go. I don't know if you can see that they're starting. Taking the timer. This one here, the three ends that was coming up. None of these others have started yet. They're just starting now. Yeah, just starting. might take a while before it starts to go but basically we want to make sure all the cells at least bubble a bit before we do the next procedure if they don't and you've got one cell doing nothing then that cell is already damaged and there's nothing you can do about it it looks like they're all starting to go taking their time but Okay, right, well I've finished the initial charge. Had it charging for about an hour. Um, I've got all the bits out the out the top. They they all came to the top, all the bits that you know the bits that I'd actually drilled out. I've got rid of all them. And the waters have risen. Yeah, I'm 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 I've might have refilled somewhat. But um when we do the next bit, that, that water will start to come out of there. Now, sort of bring it back down to the levels it should be. So, right, I'm going to show you the next bit. Now, this next bit, you'll need a welder. You want a stick welder, like I've got here. It's an inverter type welder which is sitting over here you want to turn everything down to a minimum inclu including the arc force turn it right, if you've got an arc force on it turn it right down to minimum, turn the amperage right down to minimum now on this the minimum amperage is 5 amps and it goes up to 
130 amps tops. Now we're not going to stick anywhere near that because I don't think that this battery will require such a because I, I, I don't think um, the plates are I've got the corrosion on them being a new battery I think it was mainly because it was low on juice um, but we're going to give it a blast anyway and I think 25 amps should be enough to clean those plates off because calcified they it shouldn't be very calcified at all as I say this is uh, less than a year old this battery so really it shouldn't be anywhere near as bad as the original battery all right so well, I'm going to show you the procedure if your battery is really old and it really is not holding any crank amps then you will need to step it up um, now it seems to be different with different people um, I've, you know, I saw one guy do it 100 amps, which I, I think is uh, is pushing it a bit. To be honest, I think it's a bit dangerous, but um, yeah, I think you'll have to decide how much you want to push it. To be honest, um, I might go up as far as 50 amps tops. I would, to be honest, because I think 50 amps is more than enough to probably clear the classification off. Alright, so, first of all what we're going to do is make our connections onto the battery, uh, which I'll show you what to do next. So, we need our earth. Now you want a really good connection on there, okay. Now, because you're using a stick, obviously, Really, what you want to do is get a nut and bolt, get a screw that will go into your stick holder, depending on what welder you've got, obviously. If you've just got the ordinary tweezer type, then yeah, the problem doesn't really come about. But so just let me find a nut for this bolt and uh, I'll show you what to do next. Right, what you want to do is get a nice unscrew that will easily lock into the holder. It's got to lock in really, really good, yeah? It goes through the battery terminal. Okay. Put your washers on. Put your nut on. As I say, it's imperative you make good connections. You do not want this sparking. Because a lot of hydrogen is going to be produced as soon as this starts charging up. Now you want to charge it for about three minutes. I mean, eight. A lot of them said five minutes, but I'm... I think in this case, in this particular case, as this battery is not that that bad I don't think. Three minutes is probably more than enough. I don't want to damage the battery unnecessarily on a cool battery. Okay, make sure that's done up really nice and tight. Okay. Alright, put it into your gun. Put it up nice and tight. Like you would if you were putting a, a sticking line. Okay, so it's got to be a good fit. Make sure your earth is on there with a good fit. Okay. Now, next stage is to plug in 
this particular weld that runs off the transformer. So then make sure your weld is turned off. Plug it in. And then turn it on. Right now, at the moment it's on minimum. On this case it's 5 amps. It depends on the welder of course what the minimum will be but turn it right down to minimum make sure you do and if it does have a it, have, it has an arc force turn that down to minimum as well all right it's only the amps we're interested in okay so make sure you've got nothing to light you don't have any cigarettes on or anything like that Okay, make sure you've got goggles on to protect your eyes, alright? Now, it's going to start bubbling out of here quite fiercely. As I say, three minutes is probably long enough, alright? I'm going to start it off at 5 amps and then I'm going to turn it up to 50 amps, okay? Right, and it shouldn't take long to kick in. There we go. You can see how violent they have to come up. That's okay, it's overflowing, it's not going to hurt. Already I can smell the gas. Any bits of plastic that were left in there will be pushed out of the top now. And any crap or calcification will be bro broken away from the plates. Yeah, I can really smell that now. Make sure you're in a well ventilated area, okay? Really important. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew you'd lose some fluid. That's why I wasn't too bothered about overfilling it. If you lose a bit too much fluid, you can always top it back up again after. All those cells are now bubbling lovely, all doing it equally. All the cells are in good condition. So on a battery like this where it hasn't been down for very long, I would only do three minutes, I think that's more than enough. Depending on how bad the battery is.
that's strong. Yeah, you can smell that. That's strong. Okay. It's about three minutes now. Turn the bolts back down. Shut down the welder. Unplug it. It'll take a while to settle. Now remove the earth first. Right, now you can see all the crap that's come out of there. That was the rest of the plastic that's been blown out. I said that would happen, didn't I? So, we just want to be getting rid of those bits. Make sure you wipe away your holes. You don't want the crap going back. Then you see all that black. That's all the badness coming out. If you have to do it more than once, allow it to cool down between each time. Okay. If you've got a dead cell, this will not work. If any of your cells are totally dead and they're not coming back up, this idea will not work. All the cells have got to be functional, but if they've got calcification, that's not that's not a problem because you can clean it off the plates doing this method. There are other videos you can watch if you're not sure about what I'm saying. By all means watch those too. But yeah, it definitely does work without doubt. Okay, right now what I did was I went out and bought I went out and bought some rubber bungs. I went over B&Q. If you're living in England, you'll know what I mean. But you should, but wherever country you're in, if you've got a DIY shop, they'll, they'll have these plastic bungs. I'm just going to retrieve them and show you. Okay, right. Now, yeah, I've got these rubber bungs, which I think go on the bottoms of tubes uh, for feet. If you can see that. So these are perfect. So obviously, depending on what drill saw you're using, 
as I say I used a 16 size wood bit and these fit nicely and you'll have to tap them in with a hammer um, but that's good because that means they're a good fit and they're not going to leak now on some of the videos that I watched they said put a bit of hot glue around it just to seal it but, but I think because these fit so well I don't think that would be a problem so but it's entirely up to you but I would keep a check on the battery anyway when you first start using it again in the car just check make sure it's not spilling any acid anywhere and if so yeah by all means put a little bit of hot glue just to seal it but it won't be a problem it won't it won't react so alright so I'm just letting the battery cool off a little bit and then I'll show you how to put these in ok that battery's cooled down a bit now somewhat so right so you want to put these caps in make sure they're lined up properly and give them a swift knock with the hammer and it goes down nice and hard all right now watch it because acid might spit up a little bit so make sure you're wearing goggles all right well, you're probably losing that eyesight. Okay. So, always be wearing sort of caution, yeah? Change the batteries back over so you can see the reconditioned new one. Right, remember neutral first, okay. Struggling, absolutely struggling to crank the engine over. reading actually. No, I didn't want that. Twelve point six nine volts.
Okay, well I hope this video has been some use to you. If it has, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do. So there ends another Reliant Adventure. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. Goodbye.